What's up? Hello Ego here. I just wanted to show you my way that I like to route audio from anywhere in my computer into Ableton. Uh, this allows me to take audio from like Spotify or YouTube or wherever and route it through Ableton to either record or analyze. And uh, this is really useful like if you want to sample something, like if you want to sample from YouTube, you can do it like this. If you want to analyze some tracks or if you want to record some reference tracks, things like that. Uh, you know, like if you're mixing a genre perhaps you're a little unfamiliar with, this is a good way for you to take a quick look at some tracks in that genre. For instance, if you're like a, you know, bass house producer and you are all of a sudden working on some tech house and you want to see the difference in low end frequencies, you can go ahead and route some tech house songs through uh, Ableton like this. And that will allow you to check out where their low end is compared to where you know, you're know you familiar with it. It's a good quick way to sample and to analyze. So first of all, what you're gonna need to do is you'll need to go to my Patreon. You don't actually need to, but if you find this useful, I would love it if you would jump over to my Patreon, subscribe, I post tutorials, sample packs, um, you know, I will do track review, I will create custom sale packs for you, and I also give private lessons as well. So, that aside, a little plug done, you gotta go over to Existential Audio Black Hole, all right? Now, Black Hole is a free, um, basically digital audio interface, all right? It allows you to, you know, kind of, it's kind of like Soundflower, if anyone remembers that, Soundflower or uh, Loopback, things like that, uh, but it's free, you know, and what you can do is you can click download and I think it might take you back up here where you can choose to donate or just say, I can't afford to donate either or. If you just click this, then it'll just say it's free. You provide your email address, uh, your first name, your last name. They're gonna send you a link to download it. And once you go through the entire downloading process, um, and you know what, here, I'll just demo it. So after you go through your email, which, you know, I kind of cut that section out, but you're gonna go through your email, click the link that they send you to download, and it's gonna give you these three options, black hole two channel, 16 channel, or 64 channel. It doesn't matter, I downloaded all three of them. I find it useful to have all three um, because, you know, Sometimes you only need two channels. Sometimes you need more than two channels, you know, 16, 64. Sometimes, you know, you can use these simultaneously. Like if I want to have audio coming in on 16 and going out on 64 so I don't get any feedback, I can do things like that. Uh, if you have any questions about that, type it in the comments and I'll definitely explain further how I use multiple of these to avoid feedback. But for right now, all you really need to download is the Black Hole 2 channel. Uh, once you do that, when you uh, open up your audio MIDI setup, so if you go to your finder and you go to do, 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 applications and you go down to your utilities folder in applications, you'll have your audio MIDI setup. You can go ahead and open that up and now you'll see that the audio is, um, you know, there's three options in here if you download all three of them. If you download just one, you're only gonna see Black Hole 2 channel, two ins, two outs. I have all three, like I said, because I use all three of them. So, now that you have this downloaded, you can now use this as an audio output for your computer. And all you have to do to change the audio output over here, you know, normally if you use an audio interface, like I use this Scarlett 18 i 20 I would right click and say, use this device for sound output. And that would output uh, audio to my studio monitors. Or if I want it to come through my computer speakers, I would just right click it and say, use this device and then come through my computer speakers here. Um, but for this one, what I wanna do is I wanna say black hole 16 channel. And I have to use the 16 channel one only because for some reason two channel doesn't work on my computer. I don't know why I haven't figured it out. You can use two channel and it will work just fine for you. Um, I haven't seen it breaking on anyone else's, but for some reason on mine, it doesn't work. But it's fine, I just use 16 channel and it works exactly the same way. So I right click and I say, use this device for sound output. You can see that it's already set up to output sound. So now anything that I play in my Spotify or whatever like that, it's going to um, be output through this black hole 16 channel audio interface. That means what I can do is I can go into Ableton and I can hit command comma to open my preferences and I can set my audio input device to be black hole 16 channel. 
So now audio from Spotify is going out Black Hole 16 channel and audio in Ableton is coming in via Black Hole 16 channel. So anything that I play on Spotify or whatever is gonna be routed directly into Ableton. Pretty neat. Now check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and play, oh, I don't know, maybe like a recent remix I put out. Let's just go ahead and play that. Oh wait, but there's no sound, right? We're not getting any sound at all. That's because we haven't set the monitoring to in in Ableton. You can see down here, there is audio coming in on stereo inputs one and two, but the only way to hear it is if I were to set audio to in. So next step, set your audio input to in. Ta-da! And now we can go ahead and we can hear the audio through Ableton. We can record this audio. We can analyze this audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and record a short chunk of this just to show you how I do it. Uh, turn on the record arm for this channel. And I usually will get the record just pre-rolling ahead of time. No reason to, you know, lose any audio in the front of it. So I'll just get this recording first and I go ahead and play the audio that I wanna uh, record. <laughs> Ah man, now gotta say who knew. Steady on the trigger, bro, sweet, don't pull. Lifelong lessons from a hardcore youth. Dollar flip, gotta dip. Thanks, my dude. Final piece can include starting old school feuds. All the haters out, what's with the attitude? Do what I had to do. There we go. Okay, so I can stop recording now. And you can see that I just recorded a little chunk of this track of mine. And. Now that I've done this, I can go through and I can analyze it, I can sample it, I can do whatever I want, right? Um, but I will tell you, if you're gonna analyze music this way, uh, just you know, make sure that you don't have any kind of internal EQ set on your uh, Spotify, right? Like playback, you should have a flat equalizer on here and probably set to the highest quality of streaming. Just make sure that you're not, you know, messing with the internal EQ of any track you're gonna use as a mix reference, right? And I will like to stop right now and just say, don't steal songs like this. It's gonna sound like shit if you play it in a big club. All right, it's just gonna sound bad. So just use this to analyze. Don't use this to steal music, all right? Just buy music. If you're gonna you know, you play a song out, just go and spend the dollar it costs on Bandcamp to do it. Sometimes if I wanna get a really good mix reference, I wanna make sure it's the highest quality possible, I would just go to Bandcamp and buy the track for a buck. You know, No big deal. It's great to support artists that way. This right here is only for doing little sampling bits and doing analysis. Now, one thing, um, you know, get off my soapbox there, but I just don't want anyone stealing music because of this. Next thing that you need to do, if you need to really analyze this, you can see on my master, I have my uh, analysis tools down here. Um, but this is not a really good mix reference quite yet, just because it's quiet, right? Do you see how it's not quite as loud? Like I definitely did not master this track or render it out um, at this volume. This is much quieter than it actually is. So I have to make sure that I bring this track up to zero decibels, right? I want it to get as loud as it can get without clipping. The best way to do this is to go ahead and hit Command J on any bit of audio. And I want you to watch this gain slider. As I do this over here, watch what's happening with this gain slider. Currently the gain slider is at 0, 0.00 decibels. I'm gonna hit Command J to consolidate. Now the gain slider is at negative 8.22 decibels. Because what happens when you consolidate a chunk of audio is that the gain slider will start to show you the difference between where the audio is at and how loud the audio can get before you clip. So if you wanna bring something up to unity gain or you wanna normalize a sample, you can go ahead and take any sample. Let's just find a, um, I don't know, hat. Now this hat might be loud actually. Let's just find something that's really quiet. Here we go. Here's kind of a quieter hat, okay? Just some cymatics hat. So what I can do is I can hit Command J on this hat, and now we can see that I can bring this hat up nine decibels. There's nine-ish decibels between where it is and Unity Gain. So back over to this track, I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up by eight decibels, 8.22, just by double-clicking it. 
Now this track is as loud as it was uh, rendered out at a master, and it can now be used as a solid mix reference because when you are, when you work in the red, like I do, and you are working on a mix, you want to be comparing your track against other tracks that are you know mastered at a full volume. So basically, when you're mixing in the red, you get your track to a mastered volume level. I'm not going to go into this too deeply here because it's just a whole other massive topic, um, but. You need to make sure that your track is as loud as the track you were listening to as a reference. And you need to make sure your reference track is as loud as your track, right? So they need to be matched in volume. So you need to make sure this is at zero decibels because if you're working in the red, then your stuff's at zero decibels. That's all I'm going to say about it right there. I don't really need to go into it more. I can make another video about that at some point. But now we've got this track. I'll turn the master volume down. We can go ahead and look and analyze it. And we can see where my basses are hitting. We can go ahead and look in Voxango span. We can see all the sideband content. Everything's at the right level. And uh, this is just a really great way to uh, quickly reference tracks. Like I said, if you're going to be doing a really hardcore reference, like you want to make sure that what you're getting is the highest quality audio, you might want to go buy this. But sometimes I won't even record it in. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and uh, if, I, if I want to measure things like sideband content or stuff where it doesn't matter really how loud it is, just, you know, I'll go in here and I'll play my track and I'll set the monitoring to in and I'll just take a look at the meters and I don't even worry about, you know, recording it. I'll just take a look at things like Insight. We'll get Span up here too like this, and I'm doing all this right now without the audio coming through because once I do, it'll cut my voice off. But let me just show you what I mean here. I'm gonna turn these, set the audio to come in. I want you to know something I did right there. Let's say um, I actually do want to like worry, you know, worry about the gain. Notice that the black hole 16 channel gain was turned down just a little bit, down like 12 decibels or so. That's why when I recorded it in earlier, it wasn't at the full volume. You can go ahead and adjust that right here. If you set this at zero decibels, then anything that's coming out, it's going to be at full volume. As long as you know you've gained stage Spotify up to the full volume, right? Uh, as if this is at the full volume right here, if your audio inputs, if everything's at zero decibels, then what's gonna be coming through is actually the full amount. And I can show you here, cause I think this is probably at like negative seven, negative six luffs, something like that. So let's just check it out. So there you go. And I'm looking at these levels in the luff meter now. Now you see negative 6.8. And I know this is where I had um, mixed this track, right? Negative four, uh, peaking sometimes on the subs. Um, but I know for a fact that about these levels are where that my track was mixed. So this is a good representation as long as you make sure all your uh, gain is staged appropriately via um, black hole in the audio MIDI setup, via your audio inputs in Ableton, all that kind of stuff. So um, hopefully this was really helpful for you. Like I said, if you like this kind of content, you want more uh, tutorials, sample packs, all that kind of fun stuff, right here on my Patreon. I would love to have you. It'd be great to have your support. And until next time.